You know, every time I watch a video trying to explain what Kubernetes is, it starts with a textbook definition. Kubernetes is an open source system for automating deployment, scaling, and management of containerized applications. But what does that actually mean? Let's talk about it. I've been building web applications professionally since, what, 2005, 2006? And back then, the way we used to build applications is we had our text editor, we used to write, I don't know, some PHP code, Perl, Python, whatever it is, and then we would use a web server, we would have the PHP files, we would put them on a virtual machine that was hosted in the cloud, and then the web server will simply be installed as a binary, as an executable on that Linux machine, and it will be configured so that it can serve the PHP files, which will be executed on the back end using the PHP interpreter, and then the outcome will be rendered and sent back as part of the response whenever a request comes in. Now that was all fine and it was easy to set up, but when you wanted to scale it, when you wanted to deal with you know, multiple web servers at the same time, when you wanted to create a high availability scenario, for example, when one of the web servers goes down, you need to have another web server be up in its place. Whenever you wanted to deploy multiple changes quite frequently, things became a little bit more difficult because the tooling that was available back then was quite simple. We had bash scripts, maybe later on came, you know, a Vagrant, a Puppet, that allowed us to automate a lot of the virtual machine creation process, the configuration process, you know, the, the release and deployment process of just moving these files from our source code management repositories and put them onto that web server. Also managing security releases or fixes was quite cumbersome. And whenever we had a large landscape of these virtual machines and servers, things became very, very complicated. Insert containers. Containers solved a lot of these problems. They're not new, but containers were made popular with Docker. Why? Because Docker created a very nice developer experience. It allowed containers to become something easy for people to understand. And there's a big difference between containers and virtual machines. Containers are not virtual machines. They don't have the entire operating systems. Containers rely on the fact that the kernel exists on the host and they leverage this to be able to bundle only the necessary applications that are required to run your web application, for example, or any other type of application. This is containers in short. Containers are nice is because you can package your entire application, bundle them with all of the tools that you need to run that application of yours, create a container image, which is simply just all of these files compressed, you know, if you try to break it down and if you try to dive deep and go into the details. It's just a compressed image of all of these different files structured in a specific way. And then we would store that image in what we call a container registry, which is simply a storage solution that is compatible with that type of image that we created. So you can think of this image also as a tarball or any other compression you know, file. It's really not that different. So what this allowed us to do is create that image, push it to that registry, and then we can grant access to people to that registry so that they can pull that copy off our container image, and then they can run it on their own machines and they will get exactly the same outcome. Why? Because all of the tools, the same versions, the same files, everything is in that small package. They don't need to install anything new on their machine. They don't need to worry about different versions, incompatibilities, and all of these problems. That's perfect. It solved a big problem for us, but still, it did not help us deploy at scale. Here comes Kubernetes. And this is where Kubernetes shines because let's say you have many, many, many of these containers that you would like to deploy. What happens if one of these containers crashes, for example? What happens if you need to create 15 copies of these containers and then when a request comes in, you need to distribute that traffic across these different web applications? What happens when, for example, you need to deploy a new version of the application, but still you don't want to destroy the old version. You want to keep it running until you make sure that the new version you deployed is actually running as it's supposed to be. This is where Kubernetes comes in and it can help. So Kubernetes is in simple terms, a application, right? That you can deploy. What this application can do is it can allow you to connect multiple virtual machines, which we call nodes. And it allows you to manage these virtual machines from one specific spot, which is we call the control plane. 
And then what happens is when you create pods using container images, these pods are created as containers in these VMs. Just like we said, you know, you can pull the container image on your local machine and run it. That's the same principle. When you create a pod in Kubernetes, it's pulling that image from the container registry and it is running it on one of these VMs. It's as simple as that. But what Kubernetes offers is a lot of tooling that allows you to manage a lot of containers across multiple virtual machines. That's basically what it does. And then when one of these containers fails for whatever reason or another, Kubernetes will make sure that it can create another copy of it and make sure that it's always running and it gets to a healthy state. You can also configure it in so many different ways. You can install so many add-ons and it basically allows you to manage this entire landscape with a very consistent and declarative way using YAML files. So that's what Kubernetes is. For you to understand more of this history, Honeypot have created a very nice documentary explaining the initial stages of Kubernetes, which was inspired by a system called Borg that Google has created way before Kubernetes came about. And it shows you the process of how these engineers created this concept, what was their inspiration, and how Kubernetes became the popular solution that pretty much everybody wants to adopt today.